Hey everyone! I'm so excited to be here with you guys again this week. So this month, which is a brand new month, we're starting March, we're going to be talking about patience. And patience is having to wait for something that you want right now and you have to wait for it patiently, which means you're, you're calm about it and you're quiet about it and you aren't restless waiting for this thing to happen. Today we have an awesome story in the Bible about a man named Simeon. Now Simeon had to wait almost his entire life for something that the Lord had promised to him. And yet Simeon always showed patience towards the Lord and he never once grumbled or wondered why he had to wait so long. So Simeon lived in Jerusalem and we know from the book of Luke that he was a good and godly man. That means that he followed God's laws and lived the way that God wanted him to. Simeon was waiting patiently for God's promises to come true. He believed that the Savior was the one to come and save the world. In fact, the Holy Spirit actually told Simeon himself that he would see the Savior one day in the flesh. Simeon must have trusted God a lot because he had to wait a long time for this promise of God to come true for him. I wonder what it must have been like for Simeon to have to wait so long. It was probably years and years and years of waiting for God's promises. Simeon just had to wait patiently the entire time and trust that what God was doing was good and that he would see the Savior in God's good timing. And in the end of our story, we see that Simeon did get to meet Jesus, the Savior of the world. So God's promises came true. And there are many times in our lives where we have to wait as well. And when we wait, we have to remember that the Lord is with us while we are waiting. And we have to trust God in our waiting and trust God with what's going on in our lives and remember to lean on him in times where we have to be patient. I think about the pandemic going on. There's lots of things that have been delayed, lots of things that we have to wait for now. But in the midst of all of that disappointment and in the midst of all of that waiting, God is still God and God is who he says he is. He is constant and we can lean and trust on him always. Our Bible verse this month reminds us what to do when we have to wait. And it is found in Psalm 27 verse 14. Wait for the Lord, be strong and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. Remember that God is always there to help you, even when you have to wait. So what we can learn today is that even in waiting, we can remember that God is with us. So let's pray and ask him to help us with that today. God, thank you for this reminder that you are always with us. We know that you can help us through those times even when it's hard to wait. Help us have patience like Simeon did. Help us be strong, not give up, even when we feel like we've waited forever. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. Amen indeed. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited and ready to worship God. So let's stand and sing together.
trust that you're working it out. I'm gonna hold up, slow down. I'm gonna trust that you're working it out. Good everyone. My name is Graham. I'm dressed like this because I want to know what it feels like to be a real chef. I want to be able to bake a cake that's as tall as me. I want to make chocolate chip cookies that are so gooey the chocolate stretches a full six feet. I want to understand what fondant is. Fondant? Fondant? I want to be able to say the word fondant. But like most things in life, becoming a real chef takes time. It takes patience. Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. And I know a thing or two about patience. I signed up for a baking class six weeks ago that wasn't supposed to start until today. So I have to wait. And today I found out that the class has been postponed for another two weeks because our teacher is sick. It looks like she's going to be okay, but Still, I have to wait some more. So now I'm wondering, what if I never get to go to class? What if it gets postponed again and again and again? What if it stays this way forever? forever. 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 The longer I have to wait, the harder it gets. If only there was some way to make the waiting not feel so hard. <laughs> Maybe there is a way. In today's story, we'll learn about a guy named Simeon who had to wait a long time for God to keep his promise. But Simeon didn't have to wait alone. So, I guess I'll see you soon. I'll just wait here. Oh man, I could really go for one of those gooey chocolate chip cookies right about now. Mmm, chocolate. The Bible. It's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 25 through 35. The birth of Jesus was unusual in many ways. He entered the world in a shelter with the animals and was celebrated by an entire host of angels. Glory to God in the highest. But Mary and Joseph cared for Jesus as with any child. When he was about six weeks old, they prepared to present him to the Lord at the temple. The law says we must offer a sacrifice of two pigeons. Or doves. How is he six weeks old already? But as Mary and Joseph set out for Jerusalem with their firstborn son, someone was already waiting for them, a man named Simeon, and their stories were about to collide. Simeon had grown up in Jerusalem, faithfully worshiping God. He prayed daily. Lord, help me understand your law. Help me serve you with my whole life. Simeon would have studied the scriptures, words from the prophets from hundreds of years before. The people who are now living in darkness will see a great light. They are now living in a very dark land, but a light will shine on them. What light, Lord? Over the years, Simeon continued to pray, to worship, and to seek God in the temple. God's Holy Spirit was with him. 
one day, the Spirit made Simeon a promise. You will not die before you see the Lord's Messiah. Me? With my own eyes? Thank you, Lord. Simeon believed the promise and waited in joyful expectation. Will it be today, Lord? Simeon waited some more. Will it be this year, Lord? And then he waited still more. How about this decade? We aren't quite sure how long Simeon had to wait, but when his hair turned snow white, he was still waiting. Soon, Lord. Today, at last, Simeon received a new response. A temple courtyard? I I'm on my way. Uh, where's my cloak? My walking stick? God's Spirit led Simeon straight up to the Temple Mount and into the courtyard. Simeon stood in the center of the courtyard, allowing the voices to wash around him. He wasn't quite sure what he was looking for, but he knew God would reveal it to him. A baby? Simeon turned quickly to see a young couple nearby. The man carried a pair of doves in a small cage, the usual sacrifice after a child was born. The woman cradled a tiny baby in her arms. Joseph, where do we go? Excuse me. Both the man and the woman looked up quickly. May I hold the child? <laughs> well, all right, yes. Simeon took the child gently into his arms. In the eyes of this infant, he saw the face of God, the rescuer, God's promised Messiah. His name is Jesus. Overwhelmed, Simeon turned his gaze toward heaven. Lord. You are the king over all. Now let me, your servant, go in peace. That is what you promised. My eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it in the sight of all nations. It is a light to be given to the Gentiles. It will be the glory of your people, Israel. Mary and Joseph stared in amazement. We knew he was special. This. Simeon looked down at the child, then glanced up at Mary and Joseph again. May the Lord bless you both. Gently, Simeon returned Jesus to his mother's arms. After a lifetime of waiting, Simeon was overjoyed to see the fulfillment of the promise God had given him so long ago. We don't know for sure how long Simeon had to wait before he got to see Jesus, but it's possible he had to wait for years. We usually don't have to wait years for something to happen, but sometimes when we're waiting, it can feel like years. Sometimes it can feel like forever, ever, 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 ever. Like when you're waiting for your birthday or Christmas, or when you're waiting to feel better while you're sick. I know it's hard to wait, but here's the good news. You don't have to wait alone. God is with you. He knows what you're going through. He knows what the whole world is going through. And he knows how it will all turn out. So talk to God. Put your trust in him. He's going to be with you through everything. In fact, God will be with you forever. So that's the one thing to remember today. When you have to wait, remember God is with you. I still have to wait for my first baking class. Maybe it'll happen in two weeks, maybe longer. But no matter what, I won't be waiting alone. God will be with me. I'll see you next time. Hopefully I'll have some gooey chocolate chip cookies for us to try by then. I wonder if the goo will stretch from me to you. I can't wait to find out. <laughs> see you then.